Okay. Right, okay, so in this lesson we're going to be looking at the all the different changes in Elizabethan England and the religious changes between Protestants, Catholics and Puritans. This is really awkward, guys. You can just have a little giggle. <laughs> okay, so am I right in saying that you haven't you've probably done Elizabeth's childhood and yeah, that's it? I've done a little bit. Yeah? And did you do a bit like the Northern Rebellion and that's why? A bit, yeah. Okay. We'll start from the beginning. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the differences between Catholics, Protestants and Puritans, but they're going to be looking at the religious context that Elizabeth took over and the problems that she had in that, and then we're going to be looking at what she does about the religion and how she tries to settle the disputes. Okay, so as a little bit of background for you, for hundreds of years the Catholic religion dominated the whole of Western Europe. As you'll know from your medicine course, religion is the sole thing that guides people's lives. Why is religion so important to people at that time? Think about the medicine course. So they thought God healed you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they think God has all power over their life, so it becomes the dominant force in pretty much everything they do. So, Catholics ruled Western Europe for hundreds and hundreds of years. But, in 1517, this guy at the top there, Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, civil rights man, Martin Luther, the German monk, um, sparks off something called the Reformation. And the Reformation, the clues in the title Reform, Asian, Reform meaning to change, they decide that actually they don't like the way the Catholic Church is run, they think it's corrupt, they think the Catholics are greedy, so they decide to try and overturn it, and they protest against the Catholic Church, hence the name Protestants. So Protestants is just another version of Christianity that don't like the way the Catholic Church is run. So, Protestants abandon the Catholic faith, and reject the idea of the Pope being the head of the church. And instead, they have very different ideas about the best ways to worship God. So, this is where it's going to sound a little bit like an RE lesson. It's not, but we've just got to get over what the main difference between the two of them are, so we actually know why they have so much trouble between them. So, you can read it off of your screen if you want instead, if you can't quite read it from there. But, in the Catholic faith, they believe that the Pope is the head of the church, and therefore he has the final say on all religious matters. Whereas Protestants believe that the monarch is the head of the church, the king or the queen's the head of the church. Why do you think that's going to cause a problem if Catholics think that the Pope's in charge, whereas Protestants believe that the king or queen's in charge? They're going to have a little fight about, oh, he should rule or, you know. Yeah, absolutely. They're going to they're gonna sort of squabble over who's got the power and decision making, absolutely. Um, Catholics believe that the Bible and church services should be in Latin, so therefore Latin not being a language that most English people can actually understand, so they can't read the Bible and they can't actually understand the services. Whereas Protestants believe that the Bible and church services should be in the language of ordinary people, so English, so they can actually read and understand it. Catholics believe priests should marry, whereas Protestants believe that um, priests should not marry, whereas Protestants believe that they should marry. And the last one we'll look at is that, has anyone seen a Catholic church or visited a Catholic church? Yeah, they're really beautifully decorated, they've got lots of gold, lots of colour, and they're very sort of adorned with all sorts of different decoration. Whereas the Protestant churches are very stripped down, there's not really much to them, they're quite plain, because they believe the focus should be on religion. You'll notice in the title there's the three main religions. The third main religion in this is basically a branch of Protestantism, which is Puritanism. Puritans are almost like an extremist version of Protestants. So they get their name from Purify, so Puritan. So they believe that actually you should get rid of all forms of Catholicism within them, the Catholic Church. And they have very, very strict moral attitudes. They believe um, that you should all you should do is read the Bible, you should go to church most days, etc, etc. Okay, so, the first thing you're going to do, but you're not going to do it right now, is you're going to create this chart. So, Protestant, Catholic and Puritan, you will use that information that we've just gone through to select um, the three most important features of each religion and write them down. Um, and then from that, you will either do the emerging developing question, so why do you think these differences were so important at this time? Or securing and mastering, which difference do you think would be the greatest barrier to finding a compromise between them? So which difference is the reason why the two religions are not getting on? So if you're watching this at home, 
then I would pause this video now and get on with it. Otherwise, we're just going to power through. Okay, so this is where all the cheesy graphics come in. The reason why Elizabeth inherits such a difficult time of the throne in terms of religion is because of the different religious changes that happened before her rule. So, starting off with Henry VIII, Henry VIII was originally a Catholic, as for, like we said, hundreds of years were Catholics. However, in 1517, when the Reformation started, Henry VIII decided to break with the Catholic Church. People say it's because he wanted a divorce from Catholic arrogance, it's a little bit too simplistic, there were other things going on, but nevertheless, he creates the Church of England, which essentially makes England then a Protestant country. When Henry dies, his son, Edward VI, takes the throne. He's only nine years old at this time, so obviously a nine-year-old cannot run the country and make great decisions. So the council rules on his behalf. And the council are Protestant, and they establish something called the Book of Common Prayer. This is a Protestant Bible written in English that means that everyone has to read this particular Bible. Um, so obviously that is really enforcing that England is now Protestant. When Edward dies at the age of 15, so that's six years of Protestant rule, Mary I comes onto the throne. And when Mary I comes onto the throne, she is a really staunch Catholic, and she is adamant that she's going to get rid of all forms of Protestantism from the country. What's her nickname? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. Yeah, she gets that nickname because she kills almost 300 Protestants because they're refusing to turn back to Catholicism. <coughs> 300 doesn't sound like a huge amount when you think about the numbers we're used to hearing in the media at the moment, but for back then, when the population was much smaller, that's a really big amount of people that she has got rid of, essentially. So when Elizabeth takes the throne, she's really cautious that they have had years and years of religious upheaval, from going from Protestantism to Catholics, Protestantism to Catholic, people are getting killed, people are rebelling against their monarchs. So what do you think she is worried about? Time. Yeah, absolutely. She doesn't want people to um, go against her. We already know from the bits you have done in the school that she's had a bit of a rocky start anyway. So she's really worried about religion taking over and becoming a big problem. So she thinks of trying to come up with something called a middle way. So Elizabeth's middle way is basically it's meant to be a compromise between Protestants and Catholics to keep everyone happy. Why does she want to keep everyone happy? To not start war. Absolutely, once again, so she doesn't have as little trouble as possible. So her middle way consists of, she's going to allow the priests to marry, she's going to make sure all the church services are held in English, not Latin, so everyone can understand them. She's going to bring back the Book of Common Prayer that her brother established and that Mary got rid of. She's going to declare herself the governor rather than the head of the church, so she's going to be the overseer as opposed to to the um, sort of the figure of the church. She's going to allow Catholics to worship in their own way, but this is in private, so that no Catholic masses are allowed. Church services are designed to allow people to understand and participate their religion in their own way. She's appointing a moderate Protestant to oversee the church. And recusancy fines, which are basically a fine that you have to pay if you refuse to go to church, are kept really low. So from that list, and thinking about the differences between Protestantism, Catholic and Puritan, I would then like you to go through the parts of her religious settlement, colour code which parts would suit the Catholics, which parts would suit the Protestants, and Puritans were lumping together in that part, and to what extent was Elizabeth's religious settlement a middle way? So to what extent was she actually trying to balance the two, or was she favouring a particular religion? And then emerging developing, copying complete sentences. So I think that the Catholics would feel that they feel angry, frustrated, betrayed about the religious settlement because, and then explain why you think they're going to feel that, referring to directly to bits that you think is going to upset them the most, and so on. Or securing and mastering, how do you think the Catholics, Protestants, and Puritans would feel and respond to the religious settlement and explain your answer? And why do you think Elizabeth did not enforce her own religious beliefs? on her people in the same way that her brother and sister had. So Elizabeth is a Protestant, but why is she not really enforcing that like her brother and sister? Any questions? No? Okay, so that's the end of that. 
And just for the purpose of the video, I will be at home um, filming like a past exam answer to this question, um, probably today at some point. Okay, throw 10 